studying uh, a very high philosophy, Ajatabhada, that uh, Shankaracharya's guru's guru, the Gaurabhada, Govindabhada. Govindabhada, then Gaurabhada. Shankaracharya, Govindabhada, Gaurabhada. Gaurabhada's philosophy will be studying there. Then in the beginning itself, it says, Urdhva Mula Abhakshaka. You will chant that and then you will begin. Urdhva Mula Abhakshaka Isha Ashyatva Sanatanaha Tadiva Shukram Tad Brahma Tad Eva Amritam Achyute Tashmin Loka Srita Sarve Tadu Nateti Kaschana Itad Bhaitad this is that, etat paitat, verily, this is that. It is Kathopanishad, from there, it, this has been taken. This is the eternal Ashwatha tree. It has taken the name only Ashwatha, so that people, particularly in the villages, they can understand it. It is a tree, eternal tree. No, it is not tree also. It is the eternity. So this eternity, whose roots are above, this is to give the example, people they know about the trees, they can easily understand. They understand the tree, they understand the branches, they understand the roots. So in the Kathopanisha, it is explained like this. In the 15th chapter, first sloka of the Bhagavad Gita, that also speaks like this. Urdha Mula Madasha Kam. This is the example in the Upanishad it says, Kata Upanishad, in the infinite reality and whose branches spread out below, that is this phenomenal world. The root is the infinite reality, sometimes we call as God, and the branches that we see is this phenomenal world with all multifarious rupa and nama. That is pure, that is Brahman, that is immortal. So that means the ultimate truth, that is pure, that is the immortal. It never changes, it never dies, it never takes any other form except that. So this way is the beginning of the karika. Now, after Shankaracharya's Kevala Advaita, the only non-duality, only one truth, only one reality, conception of no two, or Advaita, and the rational explanation of the existing phenomena through Maya, and three degrees of reality, that is Pratibhasik Satya, apparent truth. Apparent truth means we see a snake on a rope. As long as we see the snake, it is satya, it is truth. You cannot say it is not. Uh, one type of mental diseases, they say somebody is speaking and they can imagine, they can see. For him it is very much truth. We cannot simply deny. We can understand, but we cannot convince him. Why? Because it is truth for him. It is truth for her. What type of truth is this? It has been categorized as Pratibhasik Satya, the Sanskrit word. That means it is the apparently truth. For that particular moment. Now he is taking the medicine, or she is taking care, the doctors are taking care. After some time, it is all right. So that is called 
Pati Bhasik Satya. That means one thing that he or she was convinced afterwards, it changes completely. But the Satya, when the Sanskrit word Satya is used, means truth, and truth is eternal. <coughs> Next comes the Babuharik Satya, the action in the, in the affairs. Sometimes I am hungry, I take food. That is also satya. You cannot deny it. It is there. I'm afraid. That's also satya. That is also truth. But Babuharik satya is not the eternal truth. Then comes the Paramarthika satya. The Paramarthika means the eternal, final, higher truth. What is that? Brahman. In the whole Hinduism, it is only Brahman. So Brahman or Atman. What is this Brahman? Consciousness. It never changes. It is there. And sometimes we think it as God. That consciousness as if it is God. And the God is creating, God is preserving, and God is also destroying. But now this Muni this said, Gaurapada, he said, what the God is creating, what it is sustaining, what it is destroying, what is that? So we will come to his arguments. So it is called Ajata. It is not created at all, not born at all. Bada means philosophy. Ajata, Bada. Ajata means it is not ever created or means negative jata created never created and that is the philosophy which is of we, we know that Gaudapadas. Now what is this Parabrahma? Shankaracharya is putting this before us so that we can at least understand that. So he told this Parabrahma is Nirakara without form. And also Anir Bachaniya, you cannot explain it. And it is not having any attributes. So we have to understand the ultimate truth. Friends, I am not talking about morality, religion. I am talking about identification of the truth. And what is this truth? The moment we say God, it is also a personality. And the personality means God is having some qualities. What is that quality? It's all powerful. It can give you anything that you like or you can take it from you. So all these qualities are there. The moment there is a quality, so naturally anything that is there, so obviously sometime it will end. So that is the thing. In this external world, we see that kings, they come, they get so much of power, and afterwards, when they lose their kingdom, they don't have any power. In the modern day society, the presidents are coming, they are becoming all powerful, and after four years, if they are not reelected, no power. So this way, it always goes. But here, the Paramarthika Satya, the Brahman, is not like that. But Shankara, that's why, giving the hint. So why he is giving the hint? Because he could understand that most of the people won't be able to understand it. So he is leaving it. But we will come to know Shankara actually subscribing to the thought of his guru's guru. And he, Gaudapada idea takes us in a higher level which has been termed by the Vedantin as the Ajatabhada, theory of non-creation. Theory of non-creation. It has not been created at all, but I am speaking. He was listening. It's so very, the naturally, so natu we first thought you come, what he is talking about? If it has not been created, why he is explaining it, the first thing. And why we are listening to it. 
And what is this argument for? So this is the main thing we will see. Sometimes children are afraid of ghosts, most of the time. And people will be talking about that, the ghost means if there is a so situation is necessary. Not that where there's a lot of people, light is there, sound is there, you'll never find the ghost will be there. So no ghost writer, the story writer will say ghost. The ghost always means darkness, the broken, and nobody is living around. So in that situation. And similarly, this world also, we create with this situation, there is something should be there, and we are creating. But the mother or someone comes and to the, the child, he says, come with me. Where is your ghost? Let us go and talk to the ghost. And it entered into, no, 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 the ghost is there inside the room, I should not go. And it entered and then put the light. And he said, oh my, my God, there's only a small little mice creating some sound. Then the mother shows it, look at that, little mice creating all these sounds, right? It is not ghost. The moment you know what happens, just a few minutes before, the, in the mind of the child, the ghost, existence of ghost was so much. And it was the complete truth for that child. But the moment the guru comes and holds your hand, takes inside the room, shows that this is not completely different, it vanishes. Where it goes? This is the question. If this world is here, now you are telling the world is not true, where the world will go is a foolish question. The philosophically they will say, it is not there at all. So where it was in the conception, what is that conception? Ignorance. The moment that ignorance is taken away, knowledge. So this way we have to slowly go now this argument, a man has speedily wielding a lighted torch. Another person saw a fire circle in the air, which is not in reality true. A person is going on wielding in so fast and it's a, which sometimes we see, uh, just like a circle. When we see the circle, we see the circle fire circle, it is true, but in reality it is not, it is so easy to understand. It is not actually that fire circle, some people they will be going on doing and so many other people are also doing as if the whole area has so many fire circles all over and when you look at it, we see it, we can feel it, but at the same time it is not in reality. So that is the basic argument. Slowly we will go to that. And here it says, the man's mind is whirring. So he sees the world come down, calm down your mind and there will be no world. As because we are creating this world. This is the basic argument I am giving in the beginning itself. And then let us see who is this person, where from he came, why he is giving this type of idea, etc. And we find this theory is ascribed to Gaurapada. This Vedantin traditionally offers salutation to ten great gurus. So this is the Vedantin way, mostly the Hindus, whenever they are like to say to do something, they will always, the Kritagata. The Kritagata means they will all the gratefulness. My previous people, they have done it. Why shall I forget it? That is the first quality of a human being, Kritagata. So we should not forget that some people were here and they did it. Now we are remembering the 4th of July. This is the, the liberation came, freedom came here in America. So 
so many people died. So every year we are remembering them. Why? We are Kritagya, a Sanskrit word. Kritagya means we are grateful to you. Because you died, we are surviving. You took all the pain, we are getting the happiness. So that is the way. So everywhere in the human society, and particularly this is a very sensible pl place, this philosophy. Here they always try to keep all the names of the great gurus, the, those who gave the light. There we come to know, first is the Narayana. Where from the knowledge came? Of course from absolutes. So they begin with the Narayana. And then come the Brahma, the creator. Then Vashishta, the Narayana, he created Brahma. So we can say his son. Then Brahma's son is Vashishta. And from Vashishta comes Shakti, his son. Then Parashara Muni, we know about the Parashara Muni. And Parashara Muni's son is Basha, Vedabhyasa. Vedabhyasa's son is Shukadeva. So this is the tradition coming down. It comes from Urdha Mula, other Sakam. The Mula, the root, is begin from the topmost. What is the topmost? The God. That is called, we have given the name Narayana or Vishnu. The Vishnu Bhagavan, the Vishnu means all pervading one. For our conception to understand, so we are giving this concept, uh, the idea as a name and a form, so we can understand it. If you say all-pervading God, okay, all-pervading God, but we can't actually conceive any idea about that. The moment you say it is God, he is lying down on water, that we can imagine it may be like this. Then from him is created Brahma, he is having four heads, all the four jnanas, and the jnana means the Veda, the four Veda, he is creating. And from him come the Vashishta Muni, he is the human, and he is going out, giving the teaching of the same idea. Then come the Shakti, a very less known the Acharya, is the Shakti, then Parashara, Vyasha, Shuka. Up to this, the father-son, that is the relation. But from Shuka, as because Shuka never married, he was a sannyasi. So that is the reason he adopted a person. And Shuka's disciple was Gaurapada. Gaurapada, and Gaurapada's disciple is Govindapada. And Govinda for this disciple, Shankara. So this way it comes. <coughs> Up to Shuka, the relation only with Triputra, and then from the Shukadeva, it changes. The name actually was different. But people started calling him Gouda. Gouda is a place, it is in Bengal. That time it was the capital of Bengal, the Gouda. And now it calls Malda. So this Gouda Banga, from there, this person walked all the way to reach to this, the Guru. So that is why it says Gouda Pada. Pada means he walked. Gouda means the place, Pada means walked, so his name became Gouda Pada. And this Gouda Pada is a traditional date of Shukadeva is 3000 BC. His direct disciple must have lived sometime between 2900 to 900 BC. So obviously when this person is coming and meeting, and some people say both of them were yogis and they lived a long, long life. So somehow they are trying to prove it, but we may not accept it. It says that Gauradi Shankara Anyascha Sapta Sankha Samirita. 
Vidyaranna Muni, another very good exponent of Vedanta, he is telling that between the Gaurapada and the Shankara, this there are seven. The Gauradi, Shankara, Anyascha, Gaurapada and the Shankara, there are seven teachers are there. Another five teachers, total seven teachers. So Gaurapada, Shankara, and there must be five teachers in between. Samiritaha. So obviously that we, we can understand. But Shankara himself in his commentary on the Shetashatar Upanishad, he says, Tathacha Shuko Shiksha Shuka Shuko Shisho Gaura Charja. Gaurapada Charja. Tathacha Shuko Shishya. This is one Shishya only, not that after many, many, many. The Shukadeva and then Gaurapada. And Tathacha Shuka Shishya Gaura Charja. So that is the way. Then Gaura, Govinda, Shankara. So Govindapada also was a great soul and he was a yogi. When Shankara came to meet him, he didn't meet, could not. Because he was living in a cave and the door of the cave was very small. You have to crawl into that. That was the way people used to meditate in that way. When the Shankaracharya came and he was insisting that I should talk to you, I want your guidance, then his Guru Govinda Pada, it's not Gauda, Govinda. So this Govinda, he said, Pada means he had the respectful. Pada means the feet, naturally feet is the respect that we bow down. So that Govinda Pada. So he was telling, who are you? Then the Shankara quoted, Sridananda Rupa Shivoham Shivoham. I am in reality Satchit Ananda Saruba. I am the eternal, I am the eternal bliss, eternal existence, it is not eternal knowledge and eternal bliss. And inside, from the inside the cave, the Guru was very, very happy. But he only stretched one that leg and he said, now you touch it, offer your respect over here. Shankara worshipped that and he waited. So this is the, the stories that means you have to be very, very humble to receive the knowledge. So this is the tradition coming down. Then we find that whatever may be the antiquity, the different re re references are there that the Gaudapada was fairly known to literal people. I'm not quoting all those. Many, many, many are there who was referring to Gaudapada. Even Albaruni, I'm just referring this one, Albaruni is a historian who came along with the Muslims rulers. The Indian people, they must be knowing, those who have read the Indian history, they know this is the person, the Al-Baruni, he has given the description of Didi in India when the Muslims invent, invent, came to India. And he mentioned in his book, India, he mentioned the name of Gaurapada. So obviously he was a great influence and in India that time, most of the people, they used to follow the Vedanta and they used to naturally quote it. Now here, when you are Shankaracharya, this present age, every time we are quoting from Shankara, remembering Shankara. So obviously, if anyone is visiting and noting down, they will say there was a person very famous known as Shankara. Similarly, he also said that. Gaudapada explained in his own unique way the mantras of Mandukya Upanishad, which is famous as Gaudap that Gaudapada Karika. Mandukya Upanishad is having only 12 slokas. Only 12. Most of the Upanishads are having so many slokas, but it is only 12. But those small, it's contained the core knowledge of Vedanta. So Mundaka and Mandukya, these are the very famous books for the monks. Why? Because they are constantly teaching about the highest knowledge.
the Mundaka Upanishad and Mandukya Upanishad. So these two are very famous. Gaurapada included these twelve slokas in his Karika. And what is Karika? It is actually in a verse form and explain the doctrine of philosophy. That's all. It's not the total explanation. That is called Bhashya. Now, I, ha I am telling something and somebody will go on commenting on that, small, small comments, and in such a way, in a very lucid way, and in two, two lines, the way, so that it becomes easy for the other to remember. So the karikas are always in verse form, so the people can remember. See, the Bhagavad Gita people can remember. But it is very difficult to remember many other scriptures. There's a long uh, the sentence that they are how to remember. But the small, small verses, the karikas are like that. Gaurapada wanted to tell people about this wonderful philosophy the Ajatabhada, the creation has not come at all. There is no creation. And he, he said that in a Bhashya form and total was 215 verses. This Karika, Gaudapada Karika is having 215 verses and divided in four chapters. The first three chapters he is dealing with the subject particularly and the fourth chapter, he is praising the others who have understood this. And there he mentioned about Lord Buddha. So obviously, when he mentioned, Gaudapada is mentioning about the Lord Buddha, who was 2,500 years before. So we can understand it is possible that he, after Buddha, he invented, he came. And he appreciated Buddha, Lord Buddha. Some people are of the opinion, one gentleman, he is constantly trying to uh, give the impression that Gaudapada, he learned from the Buddhism. No, it is not true. The same knowledge they realized and Lord Buddha didn't explain anything. He only in his own way practiced and he told Atma Deepo Bhava, that is the great teachings of the Lord Buddha. You try to know yourself and become enlightened. Why you are talking about the God, the Lord Buddha said. You have not seen God. No, no one from your generation and your forefathers seen God. Why you are talking about God? So rather you follow, practice some of the moralities and slowly you will understand when your mind is completely pure, what is truth? Gaudapada accepted that and appreciated that. And Gaudapada Karika is having 215 verses divided in four chapters. The first chapter is called Agama Prakarana. The chapter, Agama Prakarana. The name of the chapter is Agama. And it is 29 verses. In these 29 verses includes the 12 verses of the Mandukya Upanishad. I am not going to the Mandukya. I will just go to these and the, some of the arguments. Second is a completely different way. It says it is a non-existence. And 38 verses about this unreality. And third it says Advaita non-dual and the, it is having 48 verses non-duality but uh, afterwards in the Shanti, Alata Shanti it says 100 verses and it says through these you can quench the fire, fire is the desire. So the 100 verses he has given for quenching the thirst, what is the thirst, desire. In the Bhagavad Gita also we find the problem is where? Kama Esha. And very simple two words they have used. What is Kama? Desire. And Krodha. When the desire is not fulfilled, I become angry. 
So Kama Esha, Krodha Esha, these are the enemies of a human being. And that is the reason the human being cannot find his real nature, which is all pervading and all blissful, eternal. You need not to be afraid of death. You need not to be afraid of changes. Or you are not going to suffer because you know that you are the blissful one. Gaudapada, like other rishis uh, of the Upanishads, accepted Omkara. The, in the beginning itself, in the first chapter, he is accepting the Omkara. But the Omkara doesn't mean this sign. <coughs> this is also only as a symbol of the Omkara. It says the Om Iti Brahma. In the Kathopanishad it says Om Iti Brahma. And Mandukka also, Om Iti Etat Aksharam Idam Sarvam. Om is that everything. What is that Omkara? Logos. In the Greek also they say the Logos. And the word, Christianity, they are telling about, talking about the word. In the beginning there was a word and nothing else. What is that word? That is, we call Omkara. The Greeks are calling it as the Logos. And the Christians, they say it, the word. But it was there, which is completely different. Why? Because this is the consciousness. This is all pervading, eternal. Before we are thinking it was there. If we forget to think it will be there. That is the only reality. And that reality has been termed as Brahman by the Hindus. So he is taking that Om in the beginning itself. And in the first chapter of his Karika, he is elaborating about this Omkara. In Agama Prakarana, the verse 28, he writes, Pranaba hi Ishwaram. When you say Omkara, the again, another name of the Omkara is Pranaba. This is another problem of the Hindus. They give so many names, one thing, but they will be giving so many names. The Lord Krishna is having thousand names. All devotees are putting one one name. And who is going to remember? And different ways, each, each and everyone, if you ask a Hindu, what is your name? Then he will say, my official name is this, but my another name is there, this is this, and my friends, they call me in this, and my father called me in this, so many names. It's difficult for himself also to remember. Here also, when they say Omkara, and also add another name, Pranaba. Pranaba Dhanu, Sharo Atma, Brahma Tallaksha Muchate, like that it says, the Omkara is your bow, and yourself is the arrow. Fix it, and then look at the target, concentrate on that, and go and hit. So that is the way they say, the Pranaba hi Isharam Vidyat. It says, no, that this Omkara is the God. Now he begins with the God. Why? Because we can understand that. In the beginning itself, if you say that there is no God, most of the people won't open that book and, and they won't listen. So that we have the understanding that the God is there. So what is that God? Pranaba. What is that Pranaba? All-pervading consciousness. So he says, Pranaba, he is Sharam Vidwa. Then next he says, Sarvasya Hridi Samsritam. He is seated in the hearts of each and every one. What is the Ishwara? What is that Pranaba? He is in the hearts of everyone. What re is residing within us? Each and every being. What is that? Consciousness. We call this consciousness as prana, as life, as so many things. Each and every one, all the time, we know, except this consciousness, nothing remains. This body, we take so much care about the body. We go to the gym, we apply so many other things, we put on different dresses, and so many to make it so beautiful. 
But we, do you really remember that inside this body is the Atman? Without the Atman, without the consciousness, the moment the consciousness leaves, nobody will look at this body. No one will take care of that body. And suppose you are a very beautiful, people will fight for you and they will try to have you. But the moment you say, no, you can, the body is there, but the life is not there. Oh my God, who is going to take that life? Nobody will take that body. So what is most important? Life. That Atman. So he is bringing this to our knowledge. Pranava hi Ishwaram Vidyat. No. You must know, you must understand, the Pranava is the Ishwara, is the God. Okay. We understand that. And where the Ishwara is, usually all people will say the God is on the heaven, in the, in the heaven. And always somewhere, because we do not know about it. But it says, no, Sarvasa Hridi Samastritam. Hridi means the heart, everyone's heart. Then it says, Sarva Vyapinam Omkaram Matva Dhiruna Shochati. But the learned one, intelligent one, understanding that this is the consciousness living in all different beings, they are not at all, uh, the the grieve. The same thing Sri Krishna is telling to Arjuna also in the second chapter of the Bhagavad Gita. The, you are thinking that the body is, but the body will change if you kill or not. If you punish or not, it is going to be destroyed. So think about the Atman. So he is at bringing our attention, taking our attention to Omkara. What is that Omkara? Ishwara. What is that Ishwara? Consciousness. Where that consciousness remains? In all beings. So this is fast he gives. Om is not the symbol, but all pervasive consciousness. This is the symbol the Hindus always respect. In anything, the Hindus always say Om. In the beginning of the speeches, or any holy person, he will begin his speech with the Om. What is that Omkara? Very pure. And why it is very pure? Because he is all pervading. Because it is the consciousness. We do not know that. And how to meditate on Brahman? How to meditate on this consciousness? So they have depicted this. But it is not Brahman. This is only, it is easy for us to concentrate. We should not take the symbol as the final. Majority of the people that makes the, that is the problem. They take the symbol as the final. The Christians, they'll be taking the cross as the final thing. That is a symbol. What is that symbol? That Jesus dedicated his life. The dedication is the thing that we should learn. Not only the cross, all the time hanging the cross and showing I am a Christian and fighting with everyone. That is not the Christian. <laughs> Christian means who is dedicated. Dedicated to what? Truth. What is the truth? God is one and he is there all the time in every being. So this is the teaching that we must understand. The, then the Gaudapada elaborate how the self resides in one body. Sarvasra Hridi Samastitam. How the self is residing? He says the self resides in one body in three stages. Now we have to understand from here itself. He is mentioning in three different stages, this self, this Omkara is residing. What is the proof that there is a self? He says, when you are awake, when you are jagrat, <coughs> you are experiencing, <coughs> sorry, you are experiencing this world, right? When you are awake, right this moment I am looking at that, the car is passing, these, there are so many things are happening, I can see all of you, you can also see me hearing, all these things are happening because we are awake. This is the state. We cannot deny it. So this we are accepting. So the, he says, this experience is called Vishwa. Vishwa means the world. So obviously, this Jagrat condition is 
experiencing the awakened mind is experiencing what? This word, Vishwa. And next is the Swapna. After all the days I am tired, I go to bed and I sleep and I see a dream. Maybe a good dream, maybe a bad dream, but in the dream, that is also an experience. In the waking stage, I am having the experience, experience of this world. And what is this world? Rupa, Rasa, Sabda, Sparsha, Gandha. These are only five. The Hindus are very specific. There is only the forms, different type of forms. There is a taste. There is a smell. So all these five things are there. That is combined, is called Vishwa, the world. World is nothing but these five things. Beyond these five, nothing is there. Who is experiencing? Me. Suppose a blind man, he won't be able to experience the huge tower of Chicago. People will call, tell him, oh, can you see it from distance we see? The moment we are approaching the Chicago city, we see that Sears Tower, oh, Chicago city is coming. But the blind man won't be able to see. For him, it is not existing at all. A deaf cannot listen, cannot hear. So someone told, let us go and listen to the Beethoven. For him, no Beethoven, because he cannot hear. So on whom all these things are resting? On me. If I can hear, if I can see, if I can touch, if I can taste, if I can smell, then only all these things are there. Otherwise it is not. So this is the main point we have to understand. So Jagdat, then comes the Sapna. In the Sapna what happens? All the internal things come. In the Sanskrit terminology, Taijas. Taijas means all the dream things. They are also each and everything as real as in the waking stage. My body is not working, but mind is working. So the existence of the mind is proved over there. Then comes Susupti, a time with a deep sleep. And that gives us a rest, a pure rest, a real rest. Susupti. In the Susupti, it is called Pragya. Why? You are in the knowledge. What is that knowledge? Beyond body and mind only, knowledge is there. That is called pragya. So this is knowledge and that is bliss. Now the question is why in that stage it is a bliss when we are awake. There are so many other problems. Sometimes we are happy, sometimes we are not. When we are sleeping, dreaming, there are also so many other things. If I don't like a person, he is appearing to me, approaching me. So naturally, in the dream itself, I'm unhappy. But this time, in the deep sleep, when there is no dream, there is no body consciousness, there is no presence of the mind, then what? Only bliss. So they say the third stage, the each and every one having that third stage. And that proves there is something your consciousness. And that is the way, no duality. When there is no duality and there is no fear, the moment there is a duality, there is the fear. Oh, this man is good or not, I do not know. But you are all alone, so there is no problem. The moment someone is coming, immediately you are afraid. So this way the duality creates problem. When there is no duality at all, you are the only one. I am the monarch of whatever I survey. There, that way you are there. So please, Shankaracharya, he is mentioning in his Nirvana Shatakam, that is the reason. Mana, the mind, buddhi, the intellect, ahamkara, the ego, chitya, the repository of all the impressions, na aham. I am not all those. Not just shotra, I am not the ear, not jube, I am not in the tongue, 
not your grana, I mean the, not in the nose, not even in the eye, not in the sky, the space, the bioma, not in this earth, and not in the air. Who am I? Shivoham, Shivoham. The beautiful way, many of the people they'll be chanting, Mano buddhyaham kara chittani naham, nacha sotra jubhe, nacha grana netre, nacha bioma bhumi, na tejo, na bayu. Chidananda rupa, sat chit ananda rupa. Shankaracharya, sometimes he is going and supporting his guru's guru. But he is also careful about the ordinary people. So he has written this to give the mention, then the creation. The God's desire, so many people, we have already studied the how the creation came, different people are giving different explanation. The God's desire, so it is created. To let there be light, there was light. God's desire, it came. That is a normal, general conception. So it came because God desired. And some say the Kala, in time it comes and goes. Some say that it is the expansion of the self. The Eka Aham Bahu Shyamavihi, even in the Upanishad this also say, I am alone, I want to be many, expansion of the self. So that was Gaurapara supporting the Chandaka Upanishad, taking the support of the Chandaka Upanishad, he says, a fourth stage is there. Three stages we have already discussed. One is awake, wake, awakening. Another is dream. Another is deep sleep. Fourth is there. And what is that fourth one? It's called non-dual or pervasive, all pervasive, unchanging, without sorrow. And he has given the name Turiya. That is the stage is also there. And we have to experience that one. And that is what Gaudapada all mentioned in, the, in his chapter 1. In the chapter 2, he says, Vaitatya. Vaitatya means that it is unreality. It is not there at all. How we will prove? The, he is telling the, any object non-existent in the beginning non-existent in the future afterwards. So obviously it is not existing in the middle also. This is the argument we have to understand. Dream. When you see the dream, the object that we really see and we get affected is not real. And when you wake up, we find those things are not there. So obviously, in the beginning, before the dream, those things were not existing. After the dream is broken, those things are not existing. So obviously, in the middle, when we were dreaming, that is also false. That is also not remaining. Here also, now, the same fallacy we are utilizing for this world. What is this? In the beginning, it was not there. And then, when we get the knowledge, it is not there. So obviously, in between, whatever we see, it is also false. About the example of the little boy who was afraid of the ghost. In the beginning, there was no ghost. It was only his imagination. And when his mother takes him inside the room and puts on the light and shows, there is no ghost. So in between, when he was afraid, he was crying, so it is not there. So like this, with this fallacy, Gaudapada says, oh jata, it is not created at all. So you have to go and pinch yourself, hey, I'm alive or what? No jata. It is not created. So not created at all. That this contrast realities we create. We create that we are a jiva and we have the prana, we are breathing, we have the loka, this world is there, and we have the gods, the devas, and so many things. Gaudapada says we imagine things in our mind, create things in our mind, 
and destroy things in our mind. In reality, it is not there. Friends, don't we uh, think in a different way. This is only a philosophy and very, very high philosophy. It needs, uh, suppose uh, the, the physicist come and speaks about the high physics. The majority of the people won't understand, but that doesn't mean that it is not there. Theory is correct. The physicist is going on telling. And some of the people, in the, even in the economy, they'll be giving some of the theorem and then they will get the Nobel Prize also. Nothing is there in reality. But they get it. It's here, this moment, we are not understanding. Why? Because it goes above our head. We, it is very difficult to understand. Then why we are speaking like this? To get an idea, because this is the truth. Whether we understand or not, this is the truth. Sometimes some people, when they talk about the death, no, 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 don't talk about the death. As if, if you don't discuss about the death, you are not going to die. That is not true. So there is something is there which is going to happen, which is, so obviously in the beginning, we were not there. And ultimately, we won't be here. So what remains in between are also like oblivion, just we are creating. So that is exactly what he says. True reality in the Karika 33 to 36, he is mentioning in these three slokas, is non-dual Atman. What is the true reality? Is non-dual Atman. And duality, we have to remember, I am alone, you know, in this building I am only alone. You are not alone. So naturally I am non-dual, no. First is building is there, so existence of many other things, forget about that. Only you alone, you have hands, you have legs, you have mind, you have all senses, you are not alone. So when the ultimate Vedanta, the ultimate reality says, nothing is there. That's why Shankaracharya, we will conclude with remembering him, quoting from him, nothing is there. What is, we cannot imagine. And that's why the confusion about the Hinduism is so much. Because the Hindus also do not understand. So, so many stages, you have to go on taking in, the stages are so high, it is almost impossible to understand. Now, in the villages I have seen, the ladies who never attended school, when the children are coming back from the school, they will say, hey, what you have read in the school? They will say, this I have read, that I have read, and they understand it. Then, the senior boy comes from the university, I don't see that you are carrying books. See, your brother is carrying so many books and he, he understands so many things. What you are doing with only notebook you are carrying and going to the school and then coming back, what you are studying? He says, today we were studying in the, mainly in the laboratory. We were experimenting this and that, H2O, and we created water. H2O, what is that? It is impossible for the mother to understand. The similarly, when they talk about that Ajatavada, there's some like that, but it is better to have an idea. So this conception is there. Not that we are going to practice this moment because we are not prepared. But this is the truth and we are going to practice this someday. And this is the Ajatavada. And true reality is this non-dual Atman. Atman is not having the legs or hands or any, any other differentiation. Nothing, only one. That's why when the Hindus say it is only one, they never say one, they say non-dual. It's not two. The moment you say one, I don't know whether Hindus are all lawmakers or not, just like the legal way they always speak. If you say one, naturally conception of two is there. How do you know this is one? There must be two. Conception of two is in your mind. So they say non-dual, advaita. There is no two. What remains? One. So this is the way it goes. In the third chapter, now directly he is speaking about the non-duality. 
first he began with the Ishwara in the first chapter and he said what is that Ishwara? Om. And what is the Omkara? All pervading consciousness. And where the consciousness remain? Everywhere. Even in the hearts of each and every one. That was the first one. And how do you feel? Suddenly you are telling and we have to believe? No. See the Jagrat, Sapna, Susupti and the fourth stage. Turiya. And when in the fourth stage you go, then only you can understand. So that way he is explaining. In the second chapter, he is mentioning about unreality. How it is unreal? Because in the beginning it was not there. In the end it is not there. So how can be it in between? So that way. I have only given them one one pages. Because there are so many arguments are there. Counter arguments, arguments. And the third chapter, he goes straight to the non-duality Advaita. Here, Gaudapada, very harsh. I, have, I was thinking to write little harsh. No, very harsh. And on those who are worshipping the images, the gods and goddesses, is very harsh. Why you are wasting your time like that? The Lord Buddha also never could understand why people are performing yajna. Because their stages were so high, it is very difficult to come down. See, one Swami told me, you should not play, you should not laugh, you should not waste your time, concentrate, concentrate. And he made a routine for me. Get up early in the morning at 2.30 and 3, then do this and do that. I hate that, oh my God, I am going to be mad if I follow it. So after two, three days, I went and with great humbleness, I told Swamiji, I have no doubt that I will realize God within no time if I follow this. But I have only one doubt that suppose I can't, then I will lose my mental balance. So I la like to talk, I like to laugh, I like to mix with people. My nature is totally different. So will you please allow me to grow in my own way? He said, ah, yes, you are correct. He embraced me and told, I should not have given this to you. I know my standard. I know from here you will stand. Stood. And then some people, they'll be telling why you are doing like this and that. So I told, see, we have just come in the base camp. We are going to climb this hill, the mountain. But now I am in the base camp. Let me start with here. What are the things are there, whether we are having all the food, water, thing, these, that. Then only we'll start. But you have already reached the middle or on the, almost near the top. Don't compare with you. Go ahead. Enjoy that. I'm coming. I'll be reaching over there. That, sure. I'm coming. I'll be reaching over there. Maybe a little late. So those who are worshipping this like that, friends, we will be discussing this particular wonderful idea. It's called Samannaya Vada of Sri Ramakrishna Vivekananda. It is actually Vivekananda who propounded, but practiced by Sri Ramakrishna. The Samannaya Bada of Swami Vivekananda, and we will conclude all the philosophies. Here in the third chapter he says, Atman self is the Akasha, is the space. The Jiva, individual self, is also Akasha, space. Akasha means space. Now the original God is like the space. And the individual self is also space, but it is like inside a jar. Inside a jar, there is also space is there, but bound. Jiva is like that. It doesn't know that it's also space. The moment you break that jar, what remains? The space only. So that is exactly what the Gaudapada is mentioning. In the fourth chapter, that is Gaudapada, he says, and he is concluding, indeed there is no creation or jata. Believe that there is no creation. Unnecessarily you are thinking about the creation and creating problem for you. 
So if we think in this way, it is completely different. But is society will uh, be able to come, all the people will be able to follow this? No, that is not possible. So that is the reason we always say, you, you have a stage, you have a standard, start from there. And it says, non-duality is the highest reality. That's true. The moment there is a reality means truth, and truth never changes. The moment there is two truths, two things are there, is limiting. It cannot be only one. There is no cause and no effect. Everything is cause and effect. Each and everything that we, we perform is, is a cause and the effect. And the consciousness is the only real, reality. In the Vivek Churamani, Shankaracharya, in his 48th sloka, he is mentioning Konamo Vanda. So why you are thinking that you are bound, you are in bondage? What is that bondage? He is asking that question. Shankara is actually supporting this Gaudapada, but sometimes also coming down and talking about Advaita. But Shankara's Advaita, most of us can understand. Gurubhada Saddhaita, very difficult. Only Shankara could understand. So that is the highest form. It says, Konamo Bandha. Where is that bondage? We always say we are in bondage and these and that. Katamesha Agatha, where from the bondage came? This, it, was, it must be somewhere. That's why it came and bound you. It was never, nowhere. Katam Pratishta Asya, where it sustained, where it remained. And katham vimoksha, how it is that we can go get liberation from it? Most of the time, our people, they'll be telling, you have to cut the bondage. You have to cut the bondage. So Shankara is asking, where is the bondage? Where from it came? And if it is, where from? That, that means somewhere it was there, where it is. And how you are going to be liberated, cutting down the bondage from it. Kosa ayam atma, what is the soul? Paramatma ka. If this soul and the paramatma, the higher soul, then katham viveka, katham etat uchyatam. Where is this discrimination and how you are explaining it? So see how the Shankara in his vivek churamani, he is telling in the same way. And finally, we let, let us conclude. The Shankara says, a highest form. That is Vedanta. He says, na mrittu na shanka na me jati bheda. Na mrittu. There is no end. With the moment we talk about the death, death is what? End. Na mrittu. There is no end. Na shanka. No fear. Most of the people, they are afraid because of the death. So when there is no death, there is no fear. Na mrittu na shanka na me jati bhedaha. How you say that this is American, this is Indian, this is Chinese? No jati. All are consciousness. Now look at the sky. The same sky everywhere. All people, they are also looking. The great moon now that we see, saw last and it will be there again, huge moon. A same moon, each and every one from everywhere, they're also observing the same moon. Hey, this is American sky and this is American moon. You cannot see from, from Afghanistan, it is banned. No, you cannot do that. So this is the way you have to understand the Paramatma, that is all consciousness, all pervading. You cannot control. Na mrittu na shanka na me jati bhedaha. Jati means that all these classes, different type of people. Then it says, pita naiva. There is no father. Me naiva mata na janma ajatabada. See the Shankara, he didn't say directly, but in a in different way, he is also mentioning this. Pita naiva, there is no father, there is no mother. So obviously, there is no creation, there is no birth. Na bandhu, 
there is no friend, no mitram. The, the mitra means related people. And the bandhu means one, any age. As liking me can be my friend. But the mitra, this, this word is used only for those who are related and at the same time of almost the same age group. That's called mitra. Na bandhu, na mitra. Then guru naiva shishya. There is no guru and there is no shishya. Don't deny me, those who have taken initiation. Not now. So, na guru na shishya. So, naturally, guru naiva shishya. Then he says, what remains? Chit ananda. Chit means the knowledge. Ananda sharupa. That is the knowledge, is that ananda. Chidananda rupa. Shivoham shivoham. Shiva doesn't mean this Shiva. Shiva, the Hindu god Shiva. It is, the Shiva means the all righteousness, all purity. That is called Shiva. So that is Shivaham Shivoham. So this is the way that our Ajatabhada, it goes. And if you have little, any, any question, then a few minutes we can discuss about that. What is that? You explain that? Oh. Oh. Yes, Dr. Ah. <laughs> that is the right thing. So since there is no cre creation, there is no question at all. So that's correct. Very good. <laughs> Uh, but uh, at this moment, we, we cannot accept that. Why? Because our mind is not like that. So suppose meditation is always good. Thinking about God is always good. But when the children are coming along with their parents, if the mother, mothers of course they say, hey, they see, hey, this is now temple, come and meditate. He will sit, he will look around and say, oh, the people, what they are doing, he will go out and he will play over there. So like that, when it goes, that is his stage. And we cannot say it is wrong, no? According to the stages. So our stage is, as Sri Ramakrishna said, believe me, there is God. And if you truly pray to God, the God will listen to you. You can see God. You can talk to God. Jesus told, knock the door, it will be open unto you. What is that knocking? Praying, praying, praying. How we can pray? With the faith. There is God. And my God is Jehovah. My God, Jesus. My God, this. Whatever. Just go and praying sincerely. And when you come to know your God, then what you see? Everything is the same. So that ultimate knowledge will come. So friends, so let me invite you in the next coming Saturday, that is the 10th December, 9th December, Mother's Titi Puja, Ma Sarada Mani's Titi Puja. Again, we are differing from this Gaudapada. Gaudapada never believed that God is taking the human form. But Shankara is supporting, and but he is telling, Eba, as if. The same God as if taking the human form. Now, at this stage, let us accept this. That God, when comes, comes with the power. God is consciousness. But when he works with the power, that power always takes the mother form. So the mother Mary. So that is also accepted in the Christian world. So that is the power. Our mother, Ma Sarada, and we think the Hindus, they believe, Saturday is the best day for the power, the Shakti. And on this Saturday, Mother Stiti Puja, we will observe here from 11 to 12 till 30. Please come. Next day, <coughs> I want you to come forward and to express in your own way some of the ideas 
of motherhood. <coughs> Please let me know if you like to speak a few words because there will be many other things will be there. So that we call a celebration. So about the motherhood, what is motherhood and how the mother are very, very important for the society because the human society need a mother. And that is the way we will discuss and there will be music, there will be songs, and there will be other things, meditation also. So in total, next Sunday, uh, that will be a 10th, right? Huh. The 10th, uh, we will also have the program. So 9th and 10th in this December. Then next Sunday, we will discuss about the Samannaya Bada of Vivekananda. The how everything has come together and everything has been given according to the mental standard. 24 December, and this time we will do it in the morning time. Because in the evening we don't get any, uh, the people who are uh, attached with the churches, and many they go to the churches. Uh, so 24th morning, again, it is a Sunday, so 11 to 12, we will have the discussion, reading from the Bible, and, uh, and uh, we will try to invite one or two friends from the churches, they will come and explain. We like to know their views too. And of course we will have the prasada all the day. So please come, enjoy this December. And January we do not know it will be snowing and what will happen. And you be in snow, I am going to India. <laughs> <laughs>